Welcome to the uh, coffee break. Uh, my name is Frank Joop here at uh, Intergraf in, uh, in Huntsville. And uh, today's topic, uh, I want to talk about uh, start at the end. And normally you would say, you know, you start at the beginning. But I think when you do a project, sometimes it is very good to start at the end, realizing what you have to produce. That can will save a lot of time and a lot of aggravation when you're in the middle of the project. So let's take a look, you know, how that will work by uh, starting at the end. Okay, let's start at the, uh, at the end. Like I said before, it maybe sounds uh, strange to start at the end, but if you do a project, it is good to think about what the end goal and end deliverables are because it can help you you know to create enough content and infrastructure and workflows that you don't have to redo stuff or waste time while you're doing the uh, uh, the project execution now some of the things you know i wrote down some uh, little bullets is that first of all you have to look at the end deliverables that sounds like like an obvious thing to do and maybe you don't know all of them but certainly you know in certain contracts or based on some previous designs and experience, you know what kind of deliverables you need to create on projects. So if you know that, then you can already start to create some uh, content for, uh, for instance, symbol libraries or pipe specs, or make sure that you have your content ready to support these deliverables that you have to create for your, uh, for your project. Now the other thing is best practice, of course, you know, we want to, uh, to learn from the past and, uh, and make it better and reuse the things that went well and forget the things that uh, didn't go that well, of course. So look back, you know, in previous type of projects, what have you done? Look at maybe the drawing list, the deliverable list, the things that had happened and learn from that and see if that can help you to set up your product early on to make sure that, like I said, that you don't have to redo things or create things halfway and then change things because that is costing hours and normally that's not what we want to do and uh, waste some of the hours. Now, important and, and also a very difficult one is take a look at the work process. You know, typically, you know, and, and I've been there myself, you know, we, we have this view of creating the deliverables as, uh, okay, we have this hard copy, like a, like a drawing, you know, and, and have this thing in mind of creating it with a CAD system. But today, the solutions we have today are not CAD based, but they're about data. They're about data. So you have to think about when you do the work process, how you can create and maintain that data and don't worry about the deliverables as yet. You know, just wait if you can, unless you have certain milestone, of course, when you have created deliverables in order to get maybe some payments or so from the client, but wait before you create the deliverables, because the deliverables are more or less, you know, like a report out of the system, and uh, you don't have to do it like in the past, that you have to create it either by hand with the old days or by a CAD system. Just create the data and wait with, pre with producing the deliverables. I think that, well, that, that is also something that maybe you can consider and would help. Now the other thing, of course, is managing risk. You know, and uh, that's easier said than done, of course. But I got two bullets. What you maybe can think about is that the one is about, of course, knowledge based, and uh, that's one of the things that uh, I'm very keen on myself is that you can create rules that will help you to check your design while you're going and uh, like I always said, you know, make the right decision early on. So if you have a project, like for instance, in, uh, for, for Shell is a good example, but other uh, owners like Aramco and, and so on, they have the same thing. They have what they call the DEP, is the design engineering practice. And Aramco also has something similar and I'm sure that ExxonMobil and other owners have the same thing. Now it would be good, you know, if you upfront early on can capture those key design parameters and rules and put them into a rule system so when you do the design in, in on your PID or any instrumentation or in 3D it doesn't really matter you can actually uh, run those rules or run the rules uh, while you do design or do them at certain you know stages of the design to make sure that you're doing the right thing early on so create the rules up front and take a look at us up front in the old days we had all these books with these rules and we just uh, kept on looking while we're doing the design and discovering it while we're doing the, uh, the engineering if you can pull that up front you know look at the end and pull it up front and start with that that will help you 
Now the other thing is about design expertise. Of course everybody like yourself you have a lot of expertise in doing certain things but to manage risk it's also good to understand what type of vendors you may have in this project. For instance if you have an automation vendor you know all, all plants these days they have automation vendors for DCS systems maybe it's good upfront to understand you know what part of the scope of work you can actually leave to the MAC, the main automation contractor. He has the expertise he is the people, so maybe it will offset some of the work, but also offset some of the risk because you know they do that, and and you don't have to worry about it. You know you don't have to do everything. So that's maybe another thing. Now, the other thing is the uh, the silos, and uh, that the, uh, that is also a difficult thing to uh, to maybe break down these silos. You have the different disciplines that have uh, have silos, but in order to execute these projects, you know leaner and smoother and faster up front you have to just understand you know who the players are and see if you can break down some of these silos between disciplines like for instance be the control set discipline and the process discipline and also within the discipline between designers and engineers you know if you think about uh, uh, that if, if you look at the work process and you can have the different parties work on the on the same data like i said before it's all about data to create the deliverables you you may have a good chance that you can uh, reduce the risk and, and and make the project go smoother when you look up front who the who the players are and how you can have these players work together and integ integrate them now the last thing is uh, focus and I have a car manufacturing and I know that we are not in, uh, in car manufacturing but I was at the car manufacturing plant because I'm, I'm fascinated by, uh, by that whole process of how they put uh, the, these cars together and you have of course this, uh, 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 this line where they put the parts in, in for the car and I, I noticed that the, the person putting in the seat or the steering wheel or whatever he was doing, he has only like a, a task that lasts two minutes. And I ask, you know, why is it so short? Well, they said for a simple reason, you know, if it's very, very short, is a very low chance that he makes a mistake. Because he has to focus and he has to focus on this task that takes two minutes and you get it done and next. And said, okay, it makes sense, you know, maybe a little boring after a while. Say, well, we rotate people. But the reason I'm saying that, that focus, you know, is also important when you execute this project. So uh, we call that task based. So you have an environment that will allow you to focus on the deliverable that you used to have to create or the task you have to do. And I think that will help also. And if you in the beginning, you know, think about these, these particular tasks that you have and, ha and, and create an environment that people are allowed or are enabled to focus, I think that will be then uh, uh, to your advantage in uh, executing this project. So these are some things I wanted to discuss about starting at the end. Like I said, normally uh, you wouldn't think about starting at the end, but you start at the beginning. But some of the things that uh, I listed and some of the suggestions I gave, maybe it will help you to uh, think, oh, wait a minute, you know, the next project we're doing, maybe these are the things that we need to consider so it avoids, you know, uh, wasting time or redoing deliverables or redoing reference data and take advantage of vendors and knowledge base to, uh, to get this project uh, executed in, in the right and smooth way and uh, your client is happy and uh, hey, I mean, get return business is what we're all about, isn't it? So. Thanks and uh, hope to see you in, uh, in the next coffee break.